Volvo. Take away its Swedish heritage and reputation for safety, and you're left with unique, desirable vehicles. People claim they don't want the same car as their neighbors. The V60 Cross Country fills that bill. It's the great-grandchild of the original XC70 that added ground clearance and cladding to a wagon for sport ute functionality. Volvo would be happy to sell you an XC60 or XC90 crossover, but this? This svelte machine stands out. For some reason, Americans just aren't crazy about station wagons, but we love SUVs and crossovers, right? Which are really tall wagons. It could be argued, if I were marketing this, I would be calling it a sleek svelte SUV because that's what it is. Compared to a standard front drive V60, Cross Country gets standard all wheel drive and nearly two and a half inches of extra ground clearance. Just know that the regular V60 is more efficient by a couple MPG. Fuel economy is okay. The EPA rates the average of this at 25 miles per gallon on specified premium fuel. And a note, you can get the standard V60 wagon with a plug-in hybrid system, but you can't get it in the cross-country version. The plug-in, an all-wheel drive vehicle with the back tires driven by electric motors, has 22 miles of all-electric range, and it's fast. But let's get back to the cross-country. Its rear wheels are turned by a traditional drive shaft. Talking to engineers, they say that the automatic engine start-stop systems that are in cars these days can save about a mile per gallon on average. The system on this one is really pretty smooth, and if you don't like it, you can turn it off very easily. The Cross Country is powered by a four-cylinder. It's a two-liter turbo with 250 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque on specified premium fuel. It's moving a car that weighs 4,030 pounds. The gearbox is an eight speed. Those practical Swedes know owners won't be using paddle shifters. Volvo provides a smorgasbord of drive modes to choose from, and the gauge cluster changes depending on the setting. The four cylinder turbo is the only engine that you can get in the cross country, uh, but it is quick. Zero to 60 happens in just under seven seconds, uh, just not in this neighborhood. I've been driving the cross country for three days now, and I uh, gotta say, not one hiccup from the transmission. Nice crisp shifts, always in the right gear, so uh, check that box off as being excellent. This car is so aptly named. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's controlled, and there's lots of room for luggage. What a great road trip vehicle. Now, I've owned two XC70 wagons in the past, and I've got to say, they drove like old broken-in sofas, soft and floaty. This, the suspension is set up somewhat on the firm side, yet it's still comfortable. Uh, body motions are nicely controlled in corners, and the steering weight, not too heavy, not too light, just perfect. It's kind of like the sports car of SUVs, though it doesn't have the chops of an Alfa Romeo Stelvio or Porsche Cayman. As far as off-roading goes, yeah, the cross-country really can do it. I drove this car in Sweden in some pretty harsh conditions. Uh, here's a flashback. In the Arctic Circle, we drove the V60 Cross Country for a good 14 hours in sub-zero temperatures, and Volvo created an obstacle course of sorts. These are running with winter tires. That's law in Sweden, so that helps. But the sophisticated traction and stability electronics, hill descent control, and BorgWarner all-wheel drive system go a long way to give drivers confidence when the terrain turns tough. This is the third generation of XC that I've driven in harsh conditions and all have performed admirably and a lot better than most would imagine. All right, back to Seattle. This being a Volvo, of course, there are a lot of safety features. Uh, standard is automatic emergency braking with pedestrian, bicycle, and large animal detection. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to be seeing a moose or a bear anywhere in this neighborhood. But you never know. 
There's a long list of standard safety tech, naturally it's a Volvo, and it's good stuff. This technology is not all created equal. Not everything is standard. The pilot assist driver's aid system is part of a $1,900 package. One thing that the cross country doesn't have, that raised seating position that people like in SUVs, but overall, it's really easy to see out of this vehicle, great sight lines. And the cabin is a lovely place to spend time. Volvo's been moving up the ladder into the premium segment for years. The trim looks furniture grade, and I'm not talking Ikea. Same goes for the rugged stitching and hefty hardware. Everything touched feels expensive. Finding a good place for phones isn't all that easy, but safety-wise, it's best to put those into the console to avoid temptation, right? Besides, all the important functions can be controlled by standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Volvo continues to install some of the most supportive and comfortable seats in the biz. It could be argued that's a safety feature, keeps a driver alert, a light massage feature is available. The user interface was one of the best a few years ago, and it's still good, but there's a lot crammed into some of the pages. Trying to read the small font takes my eyes off the road. The company is rolling out a new Android-based system in newer vehicles. Sorry you couldn't make it to Sweden with me. I'm not. I was in the Bahamas at the time. Of course you were. Uh, this may not be a tall SUV, but at 5'9", I have plenty of head, knee, leg, and foot room. Uh, door openings are big enough so that car seats go in and out, no problem. Uh, the cushions could be a little bit higher for better thigh support, but hey, not bad. Door pocket's a little bit small. Don't put hot coffee in there. Sometimes automakers don't put seat pockets here. Yay, Volvo, didn't cheap out. There's a power port. You can stick any USB adapter in here that you'd like. Actually, that's kind of flexible. Wow, dual zone climate control, heated seats. It's just like being in the Bahamas again. Volvo says this space is actually roomier than the outgoing XC70. If you've got two kids and the occasional friend that they'll drag along, this space will be very, very usable. The roads are filled with SUVs these days. The long, lean look of the V60 stands out. There are the usual Volvo design cues, like Thor's hammer headlamps and a concave grille. This is a 2020 model. 2021s will get some cosmetic changes inside and out, but it will still be the low rider of crossovers. If you often haul bike skis and kayaks up on roof racks, this kind of rig is actually better than a big tall SUV because it's lower, it's easier to load. That's something to remember if you're at the dealer trying to choose between the Cross Country and XC60. A base model begins at $46,400 with options like crystal white metallic paint, upgraded 19-inch wheels, climate and advanced safety packages, plus top-line Bowers and Wilkins audio. The tab here runs to $56,500. That's not cheap, but kind of a bargain compared to an Audi A6 Allroad or Mercedes-Benz E-Class wagon. Both of those start in the mid 60s. I didn't do the TP trunk test in Sweden because, well, one, didn't have the time, and second of all, not sure if there was a Costco within 500 kilometers. Going European there. This is simple, but it helps. The V60 is chock full of handy touches. It's like the engineers raided an REI store. Carrying skis on the roof adds wind noise. I like pass-throughs. One touch I used all the time in two of the Volvos that I owned was this divider. It's brilliant. Wish all SUVs and wagons had this. Rigs able to venture into the wilderness should have a spare tire. Not all of them do. Seats are easy to drop, and it creates a cave that's just over 60 cubic feet. If you're towing, it'll tug 2,000 pounds. Even with all of the seats usable, the V60 takes on a good amount of cargo. Eight packs of the two-ply is a decent score. See, you don't need an SUV. All right, let's break this all down in red light, green light. Green light. The V60 Cross Country has the excellent driving dynamics of a car and the utility of an SUV, the best of both worlds. The graceful design is appealing if you don't want to look like a hiker 24-7. And the interior is a sanctuary. It's comfortable and materials are top shelf. Yellow lights, uh, premium gas will ding you at the pump. Small fonts on the user interface can make it distracting to use. The big drive shaft tunnel might be awkward for middle passengers in the back. 
Red light. It doesn't have the high seating position that some people buy SUVs for. If you want the more powerful and efficient plug-in hybrid powertrain, you have to move to the standard V60 with less ground clearance. People claim they want to be unique. Who would ever think that station wagons would be the path to individuality? And because of the lower roof and load floor, they're easier to pack up for adventure. The Volvo V60 Cross Country will get you where you want to go with ease, style, and grace. Volvo assembles SUVs in America now. This car is screwed, glued, bolted, and welded together in Torslanda, Sweden for the U.S. market. Yes, Chinese conglomerate Geely bought it from Ford years ago, but it remains a very Swedish company with headquarters in Gothenburg. The city's concert hall is one of the acoustic settings in the audio system. Well, there you go, another car review in the books. So one of the many reasons why people subscribe to this channel and click the notifications bell is that at the end, I try to provide a fun fact, a little bit of trivia, and this time it's about details. When you stop and talk to an automotive engineer or a designer, the amount of the minutia that they put into a car just for a good experience is truly amazing. Take, for example, just the font style. Volvo has used the same font for over two decades. It's clean, it's classic, it's modern, it's very easy to read, which is important because Volvo is all about safety. Proving that you can have something modern yet classic. It doesn't have to be trendy. And one reason that I bring it up is because I actually recognize the font from my old 1998 Volvo 850 wagon. Uh, fun fact number two, I have owned four Volvo station wagons, and unfortunately, none of them are of this world anymore. They were all totaled and all protected my family very well. Uh, it wasn't my family's fault in any of them. Um, one was an F-250 that rammed it from the back, another one was a semi-truck, and each time the family walked away. So, you know, Volvo and safety, yeah, it's a thing, it really is. I don't have a Volvo station wagon anymore. This one's pretty nice. My wife would kill me if I came home with another car. <laughs> uh, that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.